<laughs> so if you free motion stitch on a quilt, it really helps you to get wherever you need to go. But have you ever gotten a really perfect design? Have you gotten perfect circles, perfect straight lines, even feathers, doing it by yourself, even just trying to trace a line? It's hard, isn't it? Well, I have a solution for you. Today, we're going to dive into ruler work that lets you do free motion stitching, kind of like it looks like. You know what you're doing. <laughs> I'm Kathy, and this is Sewing Tech Talk. So we have a great giveaway for today's video. It is a crosshair ruler for marking your block. So if you're going to do free motion stitching, ruler work like we're talking about today, or even just placing an embroidery on your, on your block, it's great for marking your block out. So every time you like, share, or comment, you're entered for a chance to win this great crosshair ruler. There's one! So who's going to lucky the winner be? <laughs> anyway, we'll put this aside for the lucky winner. Okay, now I want to talk about ruler work today and what the heck is ruler work? Well, when you're free motion stitching, you're moving the quilt under the machine, right? Under the needle. The machine is not moving it, you are. How do you get a really nice, perfect design? It's great for moving the quilt any way that you want, right? But if you're going sideways, how are you going to get a straight line? How are you going to get a perfect circle? Well, ruler work to the rescue. Ruler work, what it is, is you have a special foot that you put on the machine and the ruler is a piece of acrylic. It kind of looks like a cutting ruler that you're used to cutting with. Um, and it, what you're doing is you're moving the quilt with this ruler and resting the edge of the ruler against that foot. And you're going to get a perfect line because it's going to help you guide it perfectly. Kind of like training wheels to hold you in the right spot. So basically we're using the ruler to move the quilt. Pretty cool, right? Rulers for ruler work are available in just about any quilting design that you'd ever want to do. Straight lines, great. Circles, it's really hard to get a perfect circle when you're just moving it. What about feathers? Do you want to do feathers? Well, a lot of people like them and they're a little bit challenging to get the mojo of when you're first starting to do a feather. So let me talk about setting it up and then we're going to get to stitching. How does that sound? Okay. Now, first thing we want to talk about is the, the Vesta is set up for free motion. And what does that mean? That means that I've dropped the feed dogs in the machine. I have to move it. Now, the standard free motion foot for the Vesta is this hopping foot. And it's going to go on just like this. And it's going to go up and down when we move the quilt. When it's going to raise up so that we can move the quilt in between stitches. But we're going to replace that with a ruler foot. And a ruler foot kind of looks like this. This is the one for a high shank machine. Now the Baby Lock Vesta, it's a low shank machine. So let me show you briefly the difference. The low shank foot for the Vesta, it's about one half inch. The screw attachment is about one half inch from the bed of the machine. On a high shank machine, it's about one inch up from the bed of the machine. Now, if you're going to go ahead and you fall in love with the process and you say, I want to do perfect stitching and you want to order a foot and you go to the website, you need to enter in the model and make of your machine. And the amazing, intelligent people at the mothership, the Moore's mothership, will know exactly what foot you need. So you don't necessarily need to know that information when you order your foot. Now the other thing is you're going to need a, a, a bigger like an extension table for your machine or you're going to want to lower it into a cabinet. You want to be able to have access all the way around that needle to be able to put your hands down to move that quilt. And if you only have the little toy box on there, you're going to fall off the edge of the world. So you really need an extension table too. If you order an extension table, once again, you need to know the make and the model of your machine. Here's another even cooler thing. You can get a set that comes with an extension table and the ruler foot for your machine. Pretty sweet, right? So if you have one or the other, you can get them separate. But if you fall in love, you can get them together. Another thing that I like to use is this little slick um, 
top that goes on the top of the extension table. It gives you a slick surface, even slicker than the extension table, and makes moving the quilt really, really easy. So that's basically all the supplies that you need. Let's put that foot on the machine and adjust it and, and see how we do that. Now this hopping foot, when you put it on, it only goes on that one position and it raises and lowers, right? Well, the ruler foot, the ruler foot doesn't do that. It just stays in that one spot so that when you're using the ruler, it glides right along the side of that foot. We don't want to go it over the top and we don't want to go underneath. We want it to stay in that same position. But you might have a thicker or a thinner quilt, right? You might have thicker batting or thinner batting. So we're going to adjust the foot when we put it on the machine to make sure everything is just so. So let me get all some of this stuff out of the way. We're going to move our other feet aside. We don't need this one. We do need our handy dandy little screwdriver. And there's the foot. It's kind of loose on there right now. Now I just want to make sure that it's just over the top of the quilt. I want to make sure that my presser foot lever is all the way down. And after that, all I have to do is just tighten up my foot. If my quilt was thinner, it would be down farther. If my quilt was fatter, it would be up higher. I just want to do a check that when I'm stitching, the foot's just gliding over the top of that quilt and it's easy to move. Check and double check. Now, let's get started and see what it's like to do some ruler work. Now, I got a couple rulers just to show you. There are so many available. I just chose three just to give you kind of a feeling of the different kinds that are out there. So, this is a basic one. It's just a, it's just an arc, right? And this little thing down here, what the heck is that for? Well, that's a little bit of gripper so that when I'm using this ruler to move the quilt, it has a little bit of extra grip. Now, it's slick without it. I tell you one other thing that's slick without it is my hands. So I need a little bit of extra something something to help me move that quilt. And I use these for free motion anyway, ruler work or not. So my little gripper gloves, and I've had these for years, fit right on and they have little grippers on the edge to help me get that traction. I'm kind of like, what, Spider-Man? I have extra traction when I need to move that quilt. So now I'm going to get this one out of the way. And I'm going to suggest that when you get your rulers and you get your machine set up at first, don't stitch it first. Just do some practice movement runs because here's the trick that we want to do. Let me put this aside so that we can move it easily. This ruler is going to press, and I'll put it on this side so that you can see it. I'm pressing down, and can you see how I am pushing the quilt with the ruler? And can you also see how the ruler foot, edge of the foot, is gliding around the edge? It's touching the edge of that ruler. And that's going to help me sew whatever design the ruler that I have is. Here's the cool thing. I can be on any part of that foot and move the quilt. So I don't have to adjust the quilt, move it around. It's literally just going to be anywhere that I want it to be. Now, because I have that gripper under there and I have my hands with some gripper on it, I can put my hand on the ruler and on the quilt and move it just like this and I get that perfect, perfect line. You're going to want to practice that. It takes a while to figure out that I'm pressing the ruler down, I'm pressing the ruler against the foot, the foot against the ruler. Yeah, just give yourself a little bit of kindness and give yourself a little practice. One thing you're going to want to remember is that needle is coming down in the middle of this half inch foot. That means the needle is going to be a quarter inch away from the edge. So whatever I place this, the actual stitching is going to be one quarter inch away. Pretty simple concept. So if I'm putting it here and I'm moving it along, I'm not getting the stitching right along the edge of the ruler. I'm getting it a half, a quarter inch away. Quarter inch away, that's right. Now, there's fun one that I want to show you. I want to show you, we're going to start out, I like to actually start out with circles, if I can. Because what happens is, and I'm going to put this underneath, what happens is that 
I can use this ruler, I hope you can see, I'm literally moving the quilt around in a circle and it's touching that circle all the way around. And I get the perfect circle. Now here's something to think about. If this circle was, say, three inches, am I going to get a three inch circle when I'm stitching? No, it's taking a quarter inch all the way around off of that. So if I'm stitching with using this template, I'm going to get a two and a half inch circle, but I'm going to get a perfect one. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to start right up in here and I'm just going to do a needle down and needle up to pull that bobbin thread up. There's my bobbin thread. Woo, I have a long one. And I'm going to put it in position where I want it to start that circle and get those two threads out of the way. I can even do a needle down and a needle up and a needle down and a needle up to kind of set that thread on in, right? Now, if you're not familiar with three mo free motion stitching, I've done another video. I've done a video where we talk about how to get um, the perfect size uh, stitches and how to set everything up on your machine. So I do recommend that video if you're very new to free motion stitching. Ruler work just takes that a little bit to the next level. So let me show you how easy it is to make a perfect circle. So I'm going to hold this here. I'm going to place it where I want it to be. Now remember, it's going to be a quarter inch in all the way around. So let me see if I can get it so that you can see it. Get my foot on the pedal and here we go. I hope you can see that's a perfect circle. And I want you to notice I haven't lifted the template off because I want to put another circle right down here. How do I get down there? Well, if I haven't moved the template, I'm going to stitch absolutely perfectly on the top of my previous stitching. And hopefully you won't even know. Well, you look at there, I stitched right over the top of my previous line. Pretty slick, right? Try to do that without a ruler. Now I'm going to pull these threads away. I have them underneath. I'm going to bury them a little bit later. Hold on. Now, all I'm going to do is pull my foot forward. I'm going to make sure that I've placed it, keeping in mind that I'm a quarter inch away from that inside of that foot, I'm the inside of that ruler. I'm going to place it over here. Let's do another one. Because you know the trick, I automatically came down to where I want to join the next circle. Pretty slick, right? Can you see a chain of pearls going down your last, your next quilt project? Pretty cool, right? They're going to say, do you have a computer doing that? You're going to say, yes, I do. I have my own computer right here and it's just a piece of plastic. So ruler work, great for doing perfect, perfect designs. Now let me show you a design that maybe you might have found a little bit challenging. Let's try and do a feather. So I'm going to clip my thread, take my one aside, and I want to show you, hopefully you can see it. Can you see my circles? They're pretty nice, right? So now let's do a feather. 
and I want to show you the ruler for doing that. Now feathers, if you look at them, they have like a spine that comes down the middle of it. So I'm going to use this arc tool to do a wavy spine on my quilt that I'm going to put the feather on. So I'm going to do one coming right down in here. So let's go on over there. And I'm going to do the spine or the base of the feather first. And then I'm going to show you how slick feathers are. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start it right over here. I'm going to lower my presser foot. I'm going to start it right over here. Now I'm going to pull up that bobbin thread. And I might take a couple little stitches in place just to make sure everything is good. Great. Now, here's my ruler and I'm going to use it to come right along down in here and then I'm going to slide the other way so I make a beautiful serpentine like spine of my feather. Now, if you're confident, do you have to use a ruler for this? No! You could have the feed dogs up. It's pretty easy. Raise the feed dogs up, change to your other foot, do all the spines of whatever you want to do with the, with the feed dogs up, and then come on in and use your ruler work for the fancy stuff. But I wanted to show you how we do it with this kind of a tool. So I have it right here, and let's go! Now, if I want to go the other direction, I'm just going to take my ruler, put it on the other side of the foot, and continue coming on down. Pretty slick, right? Now, I'm going to turn it around so that you can see I have a spine for my feather. Now, let's get out that feather template. And it comes in a bunch of different sizes. And if you look at it, I hope you're going to say, Hey, Kathy, that sort of kind of looks like a feather, but not necessarily really. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using this shape. Remember how we did the circle? We're going to stay on the inside of this shape and slide it up just like I did the circle. And we're going to use it to backtrack over ourselves to get some of that feather look that we want. So I'm going to bring it on up over here. And can you see that the foot will slide in this little spot right here? So let's do some feathers on the right hand side. Now I'm going to turn this around so that you can see how I've done it. I'll do the left hand side so that you can see them. Can you see how I have that feather shape right on the side of the spine? I just have to remember that when I come on back, I have a quarter inch away that I'm going to be uh, staying because that's where the stitching is going to be, a quarter inch away from that edge. So let's bring it around and let's do some pretty fancy feathers. Oh yeah, there's something else I wanted to tell you. Right now I have the edge of my quilt pretty darn close. I like to usually have this backing a little bit farther away because if I have this little gripper on the bottom of my ruler, it might grip the bed of the machine. So I do have a trick. Tissue. So if you have the edge of your quilt pretty darn close there, Oops, hold on. What you can do is you can put a little piece of tissue right along the edge there and the foot, the ruler, the gripper on the ruler is not going to necessarily grab the bed of the machine. Just a little trick. Okay, now let's do some feathers. I'm going to come around the bottom and come around the top and then I'm going to backtrack just like I did on that circle. Let's see if I can do a pretty one. Just like on the circle. Could you see it? Now, what do I do? I just scoot my template up. And I keep going till I have a whole string of feathers. Pretty slick, 
right? So all I'm going to do is just keep continuing on, go right along that spine of feathers, and I hope you can see, I've done these before, you can make them big, you can make them small, you can make them perfect looking. So when you're doing a ruler, when you get a ruler for the first time, just practice it without, without stitching. When you get a ruler, you will usually get a great, great set of instructions for not only how they recommend you use it, but all the cool different designs that you can do with any given ruler. The company generally will also have a video for every single individual ruler that there is. You can go in and take a look at those and say, oh my gosh, I wish I could do those designs. There's tons of different choices. Now the Baby Lock Vesta, it's a nice little machine. It's a great size. Your machine might be just about the same size as the Vesta. And I hope you can see that a machine this size, easy to do ruler work with. Easy to get that quilt finished if that's what you want to do. So a lot of features on the machine beyond being able to do free motion stitching, but it works pretty, pretty good. And guess what? <laughs> it also does embroidery. There's another video how you can embroider using the embroidery part of the machine to get that just perfect design. So if your goal is to have something that's really beautiful, you, the right machine, maybe a piece of plastic or two, I think you're going to get there. I want to thank you so much for watching me today. I hope you got a little bit of interest in being able to do ruler work. There's a tons of them out there. I'm going to send it off to George. I'm really going to thank you for watching me today. And, you know, I think you can do it. Just give yourself a little time. Be patient, be kind, and practice. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week. Thanks, Kathy. Once again, that was a great presentation. Don't forget to click on the link to download Kathy's uh, guide on that incredible project. Um, now, every once in a while, a machine's introduced to the industry that really offers high performance at a great value, and that's the Baby Lock Vesta. Not only is it a great sewing and quilting machine, but it also is an incredible embroidery machine. The embroidery features include a hoop that's larger than 10 by six, and it has a, a wonderful color touchscreen. And look at this beautiful embroidery. Plus it removes the jump stitches, and it even has a special uh, software program that sends your design via Wi-Fi right to the machine. Now, that's not all though. For a sewing machine, it has the automatic fabric sensor that senses fabric from heavy denim to sheer fabric to working with elastic or even uh, a ribbing on a collar like a, a t-shirt knit. But quilting features, it actually will sew in different directions. We have some designs that are incredible for going down the sashing border. It has an automatic quarter inch so you can do your piecing, plus all kinds of wonderful decorative stitches. So as you see, this is an incredible sewing, quilting, and embroidery machine. Now, uh, we have a very special buy on this machine. This machine has a manufacturer suggested list price of $59.99, but right now it's on sale for $39.99, and we're including free shipping across the country, as well as uh, interest-free financing is available. I wanna make some, a very special offer for those who are watching Sewing Tech Talk with Kathy, and that is with a mystery bonus. Why is it a mystery bonus? Well, I don't have a lot of them, but I wanna make sure those who are contacting me, all you have to do is mention Kathy, our Sewing Tech Talk with Kathy, and I have this bonus value that is incredible. So give us a call at 1-800-865-9664 and discover how easy it is to get an incredible sewing, quilting, and embroidery machine. Bye for now.